Hey everyone, I've got a really neat JSON formatting solution to show you something that you could put into your environment today. It's really neat. It's an employee shout out system. It's got a list as the back end and it's got some neat card layouts as the front end. So this is what would be displayed on maybe an HR site, maybe the front page of your intranet. That would be a great thing to do to highlight employee excellence in your organization. There are a few things missing, so I will cover that as well, and let's get into it. So today's JSON formatting sample, it comes from the PNP list formatting repo, uh, part of the PNP community, as I've shown in the past. And this one is the praise cards solution. As you see down here, there are the requirements for what this view needs to have. Now this doesn't necessarily show the list requirements because the list could easily have more columns than this, but this is what this view is going to require. It'll show the data type, the internal name, and whether that field is required or optional. And we'll be using the gallery view and we are using fluent UI icons. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll talk about that when we get to that step. Let's get this list created and see something in action. And you could certainly build this into a content type, but for this demo, I'm just gonna add these columns to the default list content type. So the list is now built out based on what was in the documentation. Let's add a record and start to talk about this icon field. So, We've got the title, description, from, and to. The icon field is going to require a Fluent UI icon. If you're not familiar with Fluent UI, it is a framework that Microsoft's developed and is used extensively throughout all of their products, especially SharePoint. If you use SharePoint framework development, you are likely already familiar with Fluent UI. It used to be called Office UI Fabric. And to see these Fluent UI icons, we're gonna open up a new tab and go to this URL. This will also be in the description below. So we're here on the Fluent UI homepage. What we're gonna do is under React, we're gonna go into Styles and then Iconography. And if we scroll down, here are our Fluent UI icons. So let's look for something that's appropriate for an award or a shout out. Here's a trophy icon, I like this. If you hover over this, you'll see the word below it, and this is the word that we need to copy. This is the name of that particular Fluent UI icon, and that is what our JSON formatting block is going to be using. This is not something that people would have to pick themselves. This would be part of a front-end system and would likely be done with either a SharePoint Framework web part, Power Apps, or some other system that can display a list of these icons. So all a user has to do is pick that particular picture that they want, or this could be baked into the default value for this field, and you could just hide this field altogether. The likes field would also be hidden because that's just gonna store the names of the people who have liked this particular post. So we'll click save and let's just add a few more. Okay, I've got another row here. So what we need to do now is add our JSON formatting. For that, we need to set up the gallery view as the documentation indicates. So I'm gonna create a new view. It's gonna be a gallery view and I will just call this shout outs. It'll be a public view. So we've got the gallery view that gives us our card layout, but we need to add in our JSON formatting so that it looks good instead of, you know, what this is. So we're going to go back to the GitHub repo. We're going to click on the JSON file. And then over on the right, you'll see these little two cards, which means you could copy it. So this will copy the raw JSON. Then we go back into SharePoint, delete everything in here and paste in our JSON. Now, if we click on preview, we can see what it'll look like. It looks good. It does need a few tweaks in my opinion, and here's why. If we close the panel and we click on the heart icon, well, that works fine. It looks like it's recording the like as it should, but if we click on the commenting field, 
it opens up basically an edit view. This isn't really the best user experience. I like that it is here, but I prefer to hide this. So for that, we're gonna need to go into the JSON. Now the JSON is a little complex with this one, but let's find where these comments are and also where this is because this also brings up that same panel. I think a better user experience would be to hide these two options, so the only option is to like that particular item. After all, this amazing user experience does kind of break once you're in that panel viewing the raw list item data. Now, GitHub has a very nice window to show you all the code. So let's look down through here and don't get intimidated by these JSON formatting blocks because they will all follow this same pattern. All that you're really going to see with these longer blocks is that they have nested objects inside them under the children tab generally. So what we've got here is we've got divs with divs inside them and more divs inside those. As we drill into the children objects, we'll start to see towards the bottom, under this particular children node, we see that we've got a div that's being created. The icon name is comment. This is definitely the one that we're looking for. We'll also see the comment count here, which you could see here, the zeros. So what we want to do is we want to delete all of these children underneath this particular div. So let's jump back to our site and update the JSON with that. We could pull this out a little bit to see it easier, but we know it's down here at the bottom. There it is. So we're going to delete these objects and preview. Okay, that looks good. There's the first problem taken care of. Now we need to hide this other little slider so that the panel doesn't come out. So we should be able to scroll up some. Now we're in the title and description. I think we've gone too far. Here we go. There's an icon name of open pane that looks like that's what that icon is. Not that I've seen that icon before, but we know that that icon does open the pane out. So this is what we're probably wanting to delete. To make sure, let's just delete it, because why not? We could hit this preview button and make sure it doesn't break anything. Now that moved the like icon over to the left. I don't really like it that much on the left. I, it looks nice on the right. So let's do a control Z and undo that. And instead, maybe we get rid of this custom row action, which is actually causing that pane to come out. And then we can get rid of, how about we get rid of the attributes and then the comma before that and see if that gets us where we want to be. There we go. That's exactly what I would like. So we've actually left this div here, but we've removed the icon and the behavior from it. So it's still taking up the room and pushing that like icon over to the far right. I like this. Let's save this and close that. And now this looks nice. As more shout outs are added, it'll fill up the screen. So maybe we would want to edit this view and make sure that only the top three items are listed. And then we want to sort this by created and descending order. So it'll show the most recent three items and we can save this. Now you notice that there's some text down here on Adele's card that's just kind of clipped off some. So this is an opportunity for you to tweak that JSON card a little bit more. Maybe you want to add some CSS to truncate the description a little bit. Maybe you want to get rid of the description entirely and not use that field. That is entirely up to you. If you want to update that list, all you would have to do is after updating this list, you want to go into the view and you've got to make sure that you delete the reference to that particular field. For instance, here's where the to field is referenced. So once you delete like the description field, you would find the appropriate field in here and probably just delete the value. You don't necessarily have to delete the entire element, like this element, for example, but you could and just see how the formatting looks and tweak from there. Make small changes and keep previewing to make sure that you have done something that breaks everything. So now that we've got the view all configured, let's add this onto our front page. To do this, 
All we have to do is add a list web part. We're going to connect it to our employee shoutouts list. We'll edit the web part, set the view to shoutouts, and we can hide the command bar. And there we go. And it works great as a vertical layout or as a horizontal layout. So you have two different options here of how you want to position this thing. Try this out. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. So you've seen the back end. You've seen this card layout. Have you figured out what's missing yet? It's the data entry part. You don't want users just going to the list and creating those list items. That would just be a bad experience. So what could you do? You could have a power app. The power app could uh, write to the list. You could have the power app firing off a flow in Power Automate that would create that list item. Or you could use Microsoft Forms. If you don't want to bother with Power Apps, maybe you're not that comfortable with Power Apps, then create a Microsoft Form that could fire off a workflow in Power Automate that would create that list item and make that card pop up. I hope this has been as fun for you as it was for me to check out. These are some amazing solutions inside this library. Definitely check this thing out. Find something cool that you could implement in your organization today. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all my latest content.